Hi there and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and in this video we're going to learn the one to four player game The Isle of Cats designed by Frank West and published by the City of Games who helps sponsor this video. The fabled island filled with fierce and fantastic felines has been found but is threatened by the approaching armies of Vesh Darkhand who wishes to destroy the island and the rest of the world. I know it seems like saving the rest of the world would be the real motivation here, but hey, people love cats and we need to save them. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, place this double-sided island in the center of the play area with the side face up that shows this red cat symbol here, keeping a space on either side for what is known as the left and right fields. Then on the day tracker here, put Vesh Darkhand's boat on day five. These here are the common treasures and they come in four different shapes. Place a number of each of them below the island based on the number of players as indicated in the rule book and as I'm showing here on screen. We'll be setting up a two player game in this video so we use five of each and the rest are returned to the box. Below the common treasure set out these six special cats known as the Oshaks. Then create a supply of all the wooden cat pieces fish tokens, and permanent baskets. I've put these into some game trays containers that I have to make it easier to organize these on the table. And if you'd like to pick up some for yourself, you'll find links in the description of this video. The cards with a blue framed back are the discovery cards, which you'll shuffle into a face down deck nearby. Now take the discovery bag and put the blue, green, orange, red, and purple cat tiles into it. You can see there's a whole mess of these tiles. You also put in the 25 rare treasure tiles, which have a bright golden color and are larger than the common treasures that we saw earlier. This bag is then set nearby. Next, each player takes a double-sided random boat, ensuring that the side with a red cat symbol here is face up. And then everyone takes a permanent basket from the supply and puts it green side up in front of themselves. Now randomly decide who will go first, and beginning with that person, and going clockwise around the table, have each person pick a unique color by choosing their favorite cat from the supply, and putting it on the highest available paw of the island board here. So in this game we'll have a purple and green cat player. If you're playing with someone who has difficulties distinguishing colors, you can give them one of the provided double-sided reference cards, which give you additional ways to tell the components apart. Then place the box cover on the table and, as indicated here, set your cat inside of it. If you don't have a cat, well, that's probably for the best because I don't see it lasting for very long anyway. Also, what I've set up here is for the regular game, but if you want to play an easier game, especially with younger kids, there's a family mode. And that's all explained here on the included sheet, but I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's the setup. In the Isle of Cats, players are trying to rescue cats and collect treasures from the island before the evil Vesh and his attackers arrive. The game is played over five days, or rounds, and each round is broken into five phases, starting with filling the fields and fishing. Filling the fields represents players checking old maps and listening to the local gossip in order to find the best spots for where the island cats might be hiding. This is done by the start player drawing random tiles from the bag equal to two times the number of players for each of the fields. Remember, we have a left and a right field here. So in a two player game, we would place four tiles here and then four tiles over here. Now, if any of the tiles drawn are rare treasures like this, then move them to the common treasure area and draw new tiles from the bag to replace them in the field because rare treasures do not count against the number of tiles that you need to draw. Now it's time to go fishing. After all, you've got cats to lure out of hiding, and what better way than with their favorite snack? Each player now collects a total value of 20 fish from the supply to put by their ship. And just so it's clear, these tokens represent five fish, and these represent one each. Next, we move to the explore phase. Sure, you're on the lookout for cats, but there are many other wonders on the island as well. And in this phase, you'll get to look at the various things you might discover along the way. Here, the start player will deal seven cards to each player from the discovery deck. 
Each player now examines their own cards privately and then selects two of them to keep, which they'll put face down in front of themselves. Once everyone is ready, they then pass the remaining cards to the left. That means you'll get five cards passed to you on your right. And then you pick two from that and then pass the rest, taking two more, two more from the ones that you're handed and then you'll be left with one to pass. So that you'll have seven cards again. This is much easier to illustrate when you have more people to help out, but hopefully you get the idea. Now at any point during this process, you can feel free to examine cards that you've been keeping, just don't mix them in with the ones that you're still passing around. Also note, on days four and two of the game, instead of passing cards to the left, you pass them to the right, just to mix it up a little. Either way, every player will now have seven cards representing their potential discoveries. But these secrets aren't for free. You'll have to bribe the local cats to distract them. Check the values in the upper left-hand corner of the cards in your hand, and any you wish to keep, you then pay for in fish. For example, if I wanted to keep these five cards, they have a total value of eight, so I would return eight fish from in front of me back to the general supply. Any cards you didn't pay for, you then place into a shared face-down discard pile. The day continues, and now it's time for phase three, where you will read lessons you've recovered from the scholars who once lived on the island. Every player who is holding a public lesson in their hand, as indicated here, must read it out loud and then put it in a common spot where all players can see it throughout the game. Now, if the lesson indicates that you must pick a color, then the person who played it chooses one and takes the matching colored cat piece to put on the lesson as a reminder of their selection. All non-public lessons you're holding, which we'll just say lesson here, are not revealed, but are instead placed face down in an area by your board, but spread out so that people can see how many you have. Public lessons provide ways for all of the players to score points at the end of the game, while private ones can only score points for just the player who played it. Now though, we come to phase four, the one we've all been waiting for, rescuing cats. You'll look over the cards in your hand and pick any with a green frame on their front that you'd like to use this round. These are called rescue cards and are placed face down in front of you, but you don't have to use all of them and may wish to save some for a future round. Once all the players have chosen their cards, everyone flips them face up and now checks to see which player has the highest speed. Your speed is the total value of all boot symbols on the cards that you just flipped up. I have a total of five and my opponent has three. You now arrange the cats on the island in order from highest to lowest speed with the highest on top. And in the case of a tie, the tied players would maintain the same turn order relative to each other as they had had before. In this case, as the purple player, having the most speed, I'll just stay where I am. Now, beginning with that first player and following this turn order, players will take turns. On your turn, you will either rescue a cat or pass. And once you pass, you'll take no more turns. But everyone who hasn't passed will keep taking turns again, following the order on the board here until everyone has passed. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you exactly how to rescue a cat. The cats you are trying to attract will come from either the left or the right field. And once you've picked one you'd like to rescue, you then need a basket to put it in and fish to feed it. Cats on the left require three fish and cats on the right require five as indicated beside them. The fish that you pay are returned to the supply. But as I mentioned, you also need a basket. And this can be a permanent basket, which is a token like this, that you'll then flip over to show that it's been used and can't be used again that day. You may also have a basket on a card that you played this round. If so, you can use that instead by sending it to the discard pile. Alternatively, you might have broken baskets like this, which are no good on their own. But if you have two, they can be combined and discarded just like a regular basket. With the cat you've chosen, fed, and secured in a basket, you then immediately place it on your boat. Now before we do this, let's take a quick tour of your boat, which is divided into several different squares, grouped into seven different rooms. And they all have subtle outlines here based on the walls that are printed and the edges of the boat. But also, each square within a particular room has its own type of icon to let you know which room it's a part of. For example, all of the spaces here each show a parrot, 
So these are all part of one room. Over here, these spaces show moons, so these are their own room. These also show moons, but they're clearly separate, so these are two different rooms. And I also just want to point out, this large area here of connected spaces has no icons, but that's its icon, having none. So all of this area around here is one big room. As you play, some cards may refer to rows or columns. A row is any single line of squares that runs from the left to the right of your ship, while a column is a single line of squares that goes from the top to the bottom. And if something refers to the edge of the boat, that is the white line that you see around the outside edge. With that understood, let's now look at how things are placed in your boat, like this cat that we just rescued. The very first tile you gain can be placed anywhere in your boat, and tiles can always be flipped and rotated in any orientation you like, but they must sit fully within the edges of the boat, properly filling in the squares that they're covering. That said, you'll notice it's perfectly fine if your cat lays over multiple rooms or appears to cross walls. When you gain any new tiles later, they must always be put so that they touch a tile already on your boat. For two things to be touching in this game, they must share at least one straight edge of a square. If they only touch on a point, then they are not considered to be touching. Also, you cannot overlap other tiles. They must be fully touching the boat. So perhaps I'll place this cat like this. Every boat will have some pictured rats and then five different colored treasure maps, each in their own unique locations. You can always place cats over these and we'll see the benefits of covering rats a little bit later. But if you cover a treasure with a cat that matches its color, you may instantly take any one of the four types of common treasures here and add it to your ship. Treasure is placed just like cats and follows all of the same rules, including that it must always touch other tiles already placed. Treasure is limited though, and if it ever runs out, you cannot collect more. Now, although you get a bonus for covering treasures with the right colored cat, you can, as we saw, cover these with a tile that doesn't match, you just don't get the bonus. When gaining a tile, if your boat is full or the tile just doesn't fit anywhere, then you cannot take that tile. And those are the rules for placement. With that understood, you'll now be able to play out the rest of this phase as players take turns rescuing and placing cats until either both fields are empty or all players have passed because they've either run out of fish or baskets. Now, once everyone has passed, any rescue cards that you played but did not use are then put into the discard pile. Then it's time for the rare finds phase. The day is almost over and players return to their boats to show off their other discoveries. Starting with the first player and then following the turn order, each player may play one of their rare find cards or pass. And turns will continue like this until everyone is passed. There are two types of rare finds. Oshaks, which are brown bordered, and treasures, which are yellow. And regardless of which one you play, you then take the matching tile and add it to your boat, following the previously explained rules. Mind you, you can only take Oshaks, or rare treasures, if there are pieces available in the supply. Oshaks are unique creatures because, when placed, you decide what family of cat it will belong to by picking any one of the colored tokens from the supply and placing it on that tile. And we'll see why you might want to pick certain colors a little bit later. Once everyone has passed during this phase, the day comes to a close and any cats not rescued from the fields are returned to the box. Unclaimed treasures are not removed and remain where they are. You then advance Vesh's boat one space. And if it has now reached the hand symbol, the game is over and it's time to proceed to scoring. Otherwise, players flip all their used baskets over to their active side and you begin a new day. Any unplayed cards in your hand will carry over to the next day, and there's no limit to the number of cards you can have during the game. Any fish you didn't spend also carry over with you. And that's how you play a round or day of the game. But there is one other thing you can do, so let's quickly go over that. You may have anytime cards. These have a purple border and can be played at any time during a day. You just declare that you want to play it, and then resolve its effect here before any other actions are performed. If multiple players want to play any time cards at the same time, the player earliest in the turn order resolves theirs first. 
And that is all the rules. Now, once you do complete the final day of the game, it's time for players to calculate their final scores. So let's go back to the table and see how that works. First of all, I should point out that the game does come with a score pad and pencil, but I'm gonna walk you through the steps of scoring, so we'll just set that aside. To begin, you'll lose one point for every rat that is still visible on your ship. You also lose five points for each room that is not completely filled in. This is where paying attention to the icons within the squares will help you identify which rooms haven't been filled. Every rare treasure tile on your ship now scores you three points. Common treasures don't score you anything. Now you'll check for cat families on your boat. And a family is any three or more cats of the same color that are touching. And remember, any Oshax cats that you collected were assigned a color. So they count as a cat of that family. For example, here I have a family of four blue cats. Here is a family of six cats. Again, this Oshax cat is red, so it counts as part of this family. I'll also point out, you can have multiple families of the same colored cat. For example, here I have a family of blue cats, but these orange cats do not count as a family because only two of them are touching. These two only touch on a corner, so that doesn't count. Now check the table here on your boat and each of your cat families score a number of points based on how big they are. For example, my family of four blue cats will score me 11 points. My family of six red cats will score me 20. And my other family of three blue cats will score me eight. You'll notice all of the steps for scoring are shown here. And the next one we're gonna talk about is the points you gain for your lessons. These are the private ones you collected face down. Reveal them and then follow their scoring instructions, adding their value to your score. Finally, each player checks the public lesson cards and everyone can score points from these. The player with the highest score now wins. And in the case of a tie, the tied player with the most fish remaining wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. The game also comes with rules and components for solo play, which you'll find detailed on these pages of the rulebook. There are also some guidelines provided here for adding additional lessons in as expansions are released for the game and other promos. There's also an expansion available to allow for five to six players, which you can pick up separately, but all of this I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play the Isle of Cats. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.